availability of financing for climate change has been increasing steadily over time. However, it's still insufficient to meet the needs of countries worldwide, leading to increased competition for a limited amount of funding. Financing for climate action poses even greater challenges for transboundary river basins than for individual countries. Transboundary basins don't fit squarely into the common practice approaches for climate financing, which have traditionally provided funding for individual sovereign states. Transboundary basins, on the other hand, are uh, contexts in which projects are commonly or cooperatively managed and uh, jointly owned by the member states of the basins. Nevertheless, there is an increased recognition among funding partners that regional and transboundary approaches can be more efficient and effective in the long term. These benefits are compelling and increasing the number of projects that are delivered for delivered and approved for transboundary basins. When we talk about climate change financing, what we mean is funding that's available for mitigation or adaptation projects that comes from public, private, or other sources, such as philanthropic organizations, institutions. That funding can come in the source of grants or loans, and it's delivered and implemented at the national, regional, and international levels. Climate financing is rather complex, that even looking just at adaptation finance, there are a multiplicity of factors from the sources to the implementing partners involved. On the positive side, financing partners, including multilateral development institutions and bilateral donors, have mainstreamed climate change into all of their development projects and have significantly increased the number of climate change related projects in their portfolios. For example, the African Development Bank portfolio is now 40% climate change projects divided equally between adaptation and mitigation. Water resources management is a high priority uh, for investments um, for all of the funding partners, whether that be for grants or for loans. River basin organizations play a critical role in climate financing for, for the countries that have transboundary basins. One of the main roles of a river, river basin organization is to ensure stable and adequate financing um, for the long term. In order to do this, river, board, river basin organizations, or RBOs, need to be familiar with all of the sources and requirements of those institutions and establish relationships with funding partners. RBOs need to fully understand the technical and political aspects of the evolving climate scenario in the basin. The private sector also plays an important and major role, an increasingly large role in climate financing. Um, and a, an RBO needs to also be familiar and have relationships with the various private sector sources, institutions, and opportunities in the basin in order to strategically bring together the different financing sources in what's called blended financing. Blended financing uh, incorporates the public, private, and, um, and other types of sources under one project, and this is one of the most effective ways to ensure uh, successful uh, project financing. Many of the international and regional funding sources for climate change have special requirements for, uh, for financing projects. Projects must align with the funding institution's mandate, with their priorities, their rules, and their procedures. Projects must also align with the national, regional, and international policies and commitments that are relevant to a particular area. So for example, if there's a nationally determined contribution, uh, or, or because all countries now have nationally determined contributions, uh, it's important that 
the project for the basin also take into consideration what are uh, what it, what is included in the NDC of the member state countries? Have those member states uh, subscribed to any international treaties that could be relevant, whether water treaties or environmental treaties? And um, and are the is the is the project in line with the um, with the MDGs or other uh, global commitments that countries uh, are pursuing. Another essential requirement for climate change financing is that a project clearly demonstrate a climate linkage. This may seem obvious, but one of the greatest pitfalls of, pri of climate change projects is that they oftentimes don't demonstrate the climate linkage and therefore look to funding sources as if um, they are a simple uh, development project. In order to show the climate linkage, it's essential to, to look to the climate data that, that shows that there will be impacts from climate change and link, the, the, link those impacts with the objectives of the project. Some funding institutions also require accreditation uh, to receive and implement funds. One such institution is the Green Climate Fund. The Green Climate Fund, or GCF as it's called, supports regional and multi-country projects. However, they have, th those projects have mainly supported a single agency or institution that then provides finance to a number of countries separate projects, as opposed to a transboundary shared project. But as an evolving institution, opportunities exist for basins that demonstrate strong cooperation and potential for success. One such example is last year, the Niger Basin Authority obtained finance from the GCF, the World Bank, the African Development Bank, and other bilater bilateral funding sources to support their climate resilience investment project. GCF funds small, medium, and large size projects. Smaller projects under $10 million can be financed through a simplified approval process that streamlines some of the requirements for, um, for requesting funding. Funding is also available for project preparation, which can help uh, pay for consultants, feasibility studies, and environmental studies. And more information on GCF's requirements, on the opportunities for uh, financing adaptation mitigation projects is available on their website. Another source of funding for adaptation that is particularly interesting to transboundary basins is the Adaptation Fund. The Adaptation Fund has been financing regional and transboundary projects since 2015 in three key areas, food security, disaster risk management and early warning systems, and transboundary water management. They finance projects throughout Africa, in Latin America, and in Eastern Europe. And it appears that they will continue financing into at least the near future. Other financing that is available for climate change uh, can, can come from the Global Environment Facility that has window a financing window for international waters and climate change. There are also bilateral funds uh, provided by international um, uh, partners who also have implementing support on the ground through their various embassies and other um, development agencies. And the multilateral and regional development banks also um, have, have special funds for climate change, such as the Least Developed Country Fund, the Pilot Project for Climate Resilience, and the Strategic Climate Change Fund, among others, uh, in the, the World Bank and the different regional development banks. In conclusion, climate change is increasing, uh, climate change financing is increasing, but still insufficient for global needs. Climate funds have many specific requirements and it is critical to understand and follow those procedures in order to access the financing from those various channels. Transboundary 
basins may face additional challenges in accessing financing, but they offer unique opportunities for efficient resource use and for broader impact that is attractive to uh, the different financing sources. So good luck to you in your work and thank you for your attention today.